Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan, and in this video, I'm gonna be going over some dating behaviors that are incredibly attractive to women, but also are just good tips for you to be following for yourself and your well-being when you're dating. And yes, there are absolutely dating behaviors women do that make them more attractive as well, so don't think that none of this applies to the ladies. Leave a comment down below of things that women do in dating that you find attractive, and be sure to give this video a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And before we get started, big thank you to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video. Magic Spoon is cereal reinvented. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, four to five net grams of carbs in each serving, and only 140 calories. They're also keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, and soy-free. The variety pack comes with four delicious flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. I'm having a tough time picking a favorite because if I'm being so honest with you, I'm actually obsessed with all of them and I'm not being dramatic, um, but I would say my favorites are probably the cocoa and the fruity. They are just so good, I can't even begin to explain. I've really been trying to add more protein to my diet and also cut back on sugar, and it definitely helps when my delicious snacks are also full of protein. That's why I am so glad that I found Magic Spoon. It has the great taste you love with more protein and less sugar. That's a win. I will quite literally never eat another bowl of regular cereal again. So click the link below to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use the promo code Courtney Ryan at checkout to get $5 off any order or go to magicspoon.com slash Courtney Ryan. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. The first dating behavior that is incredibly attractive is taking things slow. Slow and steady wins the race, gentlemen. And this is because ultimately, someone who is sure of themselves and confident in what they bring to a relationship is able to take things slow because they have other things in their life that bring them joy and fulfillment, which is obviously very attractive when you're dating or in a relationship. Because of this, you're essentially evaluating if this person you're dating would be a good long-term partner, and you're not just filling this prestigious position with any woman who has a pulse. And more specifically here, there are several reasons why it can be beneficial to take things slow when it comes to dating. The first thing is building trust. So taking things slow allows you to build trust and establish a connection with this other person. It can also help create a more stable and fulfilling relationship in the long run. The next one obviously is getting to know each other a little bit more and on a deeper level. This can help create a stronger emotional connection and intimacy in the long run as well. Reducing pressure is another benefit. This can really help both of you relax and enjoy the process of getting to know each other instead of feeling like you need to rush things and stress each other out. The next benefit is discovering true compatibility. So taking things slow can help you discover whether you and this person are actually compatible or are you just going in with this mindset of, oh, I have to get her to like me. It has to work out when you aren't even compatible and you don't even like her. By doing this, you can actually help prevent heartache and disappointment down the line. Now, this isn't always guaranteed. Sometimes things happen and we break up, but if you know from the very start that you're not compatible with someone, you don't even need to waste your time continuing things. Taking things slow really helps you build a strong foundation for a lasting relationship that's built on respect, trust, and mutual understanding. It also helps you avoid being desperate, clingy, and needy, all of which are behaviors that are incredibly unattractive to women. You don't wanna look like the guy or be the guy who is a stage five clinger after date number one and who is telling her you love her after the first date. The next dating behavior that makes you incredibly attractive is taking initiative. Taking initiative is a trait that many women look for in a man because it's incredibly masculine, it's sexy. I'm sure you've heard this a million times before. Women like to turn to their man to be a leader and it's really hard to do that with a man who is passive or who never takes initiative or can't make a decision. And really here, taking initiative can be attractive to women for several different reasons. The first one is confidence. So it shows that you're confident in yourself and your abilities. This is obviously very attractive to women who are looking for a partner who is self-assured and capable and reliable. Taking initiative also shows that a man is responsible and willing to take ownership of a situation. This is gonna show that woman in your life that you're reliable and dependable, which is attractive for obvious reasons. These are main things that women look for in a serious partner or great women are looking for. Leadership is another really big point here. So taking initiative can be a sign of leadership qualities. As I mentioned earlier, this is attractive to women who are looking for a partner who's able to take charge. Again, just take initiative in general and make decisions when it's necessary. And she might be turning to you for this because she trusts you. She wants to be able to rely on you and trust that you're able to make good decisions for her and maybe your future family. It also shows that a man is willing to actually put in effort to make a relationship work. Effort is sexy and it shows that you care. 
And when you're dating, it's nice to feel like that other person is putting in the same amount of effort that you are. And maybe you're putting in effort in different ways, but just seeing that there's effort being put in is so sexy. The next dating behavior that makes you attractive is emotional maturity. If you're new here and you haven't heard me talk about this before, emotional maturity allows us to manage our emotions and reactions in a productive and healthy way. It helps us develop a sense of self-control and self-awareness, which are obviously important in relationships, but also for our own personal growth as individuals. Emotional maturity is often associated with many other positive qualities as well, like confidence, empathy, good decision-making skills, the list goes on, and who wouldn't want that? But why is this attractive in dating? Because emotional maturity allows individuals to handle the ups and downs of a relationship or just life with greater ease and understanding. When someone is emotionally mature, they're better equipped to communicate effectively, to communicate conflicts or handle conflicts in a healthy manner, and develop a deeper level of intimacy with another person. Included in this point is also mature vulnerability. And I'm hesitant to use that word because a lot of you guys completely shut down when you hear me say that. So let me explain, stick with me here. Mature vulnerability is how we connect with people on a deeper level. I want you to understand that putting your deepest wounds on display on a first date isn't what I'm talking about here. That's often something I would consider to be oversharing or emotional dumping. Mature vulnerability and sharing yourself happens naturally as you get to know someone more deeply. And it's not this emotional vomit thing. I think people hear the word vulnerability and they automatically think, you know, again, expressing your deepest wounds on a first date or breaking down and crying about your ex-girlfriend on a first date. You shouldn't be doing that. That's not mature vulnerability here. And not to say that there's a right or wrong way to be vulnerable, but I do think that there's a mature way to handle this that isn't going to be a turnoff to women. The next attractive dating behavior is being a gentleman, one of my all-time favorite things to talk about. And really just overall respect. So being kind and courteous certainly will not hurt you, especially when you're with a great woman who is going to appreciate this about you. This could be small gestures like opening the door, walking on the outside of the sidewalk closest to the street, etc. And as much as good posture, grooming habits, or a sharp outfit help you in dating, they certainly don't make the man. But who you are to the core absolutely matters, and being kind or a gentleman makes you stand out in the absolute best way. I will never forget the things that my fiance did for me for the first time when we were dating, like opening the door, giving me his scarf when it was cold, moving me towards the inside of the sidewalk when we walked next to each other to protect me. And not to be dramatic, but I absolutely melted when he did all of these things for me because it gave me an insight to his character, how he treats people he cares about, and again, who he is in here. Being a gentleman is attractive to women for so many reasons. First being that it shows that a man respects and cares for others. This is a trait that's highly valuable in any relationship and can really help build trust and strengthen the emotional aspect of a relationship. As I mentioned before, being a gentleman also involves good manners like holding doors open, pulling out chairs, being polite, which can make a woman feel valued and appreciated. It also involves being considerate and attentive to a woman's needs and desires, which can make her feel special and cared for. But overall, being a gentleman is a combination of traits that make a man kind, respectful, and attractive to women. My last dating behavior that makes you attractive is positive effect. So would you rather be around a negative Nelly who complains 24 seven or someone who is generally positive? Someone who makes an experience positive or ruins it every time by being negative? I know who I'm picking. And this little excerpt says, because our relationships with others are based in large part on emotional responses, it will come as no surprise to you to hear that effect is particularly important in interpersonal relationships. The relationship between mood and liking is pretty straightforward. We tend to like people more when we're in good moods and to like them less when we're in bad moods. This prediction follows directly from the expectation that effective states provide us with information about the social context. In this case, the people around us. Positive effect signals that it is safe and desirable to approach the other person, whereas negative effect is more likely to indicate danger and to suggest avoidance. Moral of the story here is to create a positive experience. Showing up, looking like your best, this starts with you, of course, but also having a great conversation, telling a funny joke, all of these things might be just enough to be effective. How you make other people feel about themselves or just in general says a lot about you. And I think when you make people feel seen, valued and heard and create an overall positive experience, they're going to like you more. They're gonna have a better time. It's going to be more enjoyable for the both of you, but also leave a lasting impression on that other person that is a generally positive one. 
You can probably think of your life specifically and people that you hang around where some of them are more negative and complain all the time or always have something bad to say or are just negative Nellies um, and how you feel when you walk away from being around those people. They're energy vampires. It's draining. It's exhausting. Maybe that's you and something that you need to work on. I don't know. Um, But then compared to a positive person, and I'm not saying you need to be sunshine and rainbows 24-7. It's okay if things don't always work out. You know, you don't have to be in the best mood all the time. But I do think being generally positive versus constantly negative is something that people notice, they pick up on, and it affects if they want to be around you or not, or if they find you attractive when you're dating. I actually saw a video on TikTok a few weeks ago of a guy talking about his dating experience. And it wasn't even like he was very unattractive. He was pretty average looking, but he was just going on and he was being so bitter and hateful and negative. And just the words that were coming out of his mouth, his body language, everything about what he was saying and how he was saying it made him so incredibly unattractive. And again, it had nothing to do with the way he looked. Even if it was a black screen and I couldn't see what he looked like, The way he was speaking, the things he was saying and how he was saying it, just how negative he was being was so unattractive. And maybe I'll react to that video in the future if you guys want to see it. I won't show you in case you want me to, you know, do an entire video and react. So let me know if you want to see that. Um, But I do think that even if you can't even see someone, the way that someone acts is important. Who someone is in here and in here is important. And I think being positive is something that a lot of women are attracted to and just, you know, makes you more enjoyable to be around. All right, guys, that is all I have for this video. If you liked it or found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be in the loop for when I release new content. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, let me know some things that women do that you find attractive versus unattractive in dating. Um, I certainly don't want to just throw you guys under the bus and act like women are perfect and have no room for improvement because we certainly do. So let me know down in the comments. If you haven't already, be sure to follow me over on Instagram at Courtney Christine Ryan. I love connecting with all of you guys over on there as well. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time.